What's social judgment theory? I believe everyone has recently seen many reports about coronavirus. Maybe some of you have already been to Walmart to get food for the next few months. When we saw this report, I believe you also noticed the different reactions of people around you. For example, some people feel that they should prepare immediately. Some people get freaked out. Others feel that this is just small flu, and there is no need to be so nervous. Of course, some people think that they don't live in the United States and far away from the affected area, SP don't really care about it. It is the same message conveyed through the same media channels. Why do people react so differently? Let's get into today's topic social judgment theory and learn more about this phenomenon. Before we start, let's take a look at some statement of facts. Social judgment theory was first developed in the 1960s. This theory was proposed by Carolyn Sharif, Muzaffar Sharif, and Carl Hovland. Psychology at that time was right in the development of cognitive psychology. Researchers are curious as to what drives people to perform certain behaviors and the reasons behind them. This background period is when we begin to get a deeper understanding of the human cognitive process. So, what exactly is social judgment? Social judgment is the process of perception and judgment based on one's attitude when an individual faces a specific message or issue. This process also determines how people perceive and evaluate this message when we create it to persuade others. How to use message design to change others' attitudes to issues to convey the message we want them to accept. When we know coronavirus, what is our attitude towards this issue, and how will we respond to this issue? This may sound abstract, but don't worry. We have a specific model that helps us measure our judgment process. In social judgment theory, there are three key factors that make up our perception of information. The first is the judgmental anchor, which represents individuals' original personal acceptance to the message. Judgmental anchors vary from individual to individual. The second one is latitudes of rejection, acceptance, and noncommitment, which is individual's spectrum of attitude when face relevant information. The last is ego involvement, which is the depth of individual's involvement in this issue. Ego involvement depends on how much our judgment on this issue affects our self esteem in life. Let's look at them one by one. People's attitudes towards specific issues are divided into three levels, and each person's attitude scale is different. Latitudes of acceptance indicates that people are accepting and agreeing to this message. Latitudes of rejection means disagree or reject the message. Latitudes of noncommitment means that the issue is not very relevant to the audience or the audience doesn't have specific opinion. Next, let's see ego involvement, which is a very important factor when conveying a persuasive message. When people pay more attention to an issue or the issue is important to people, ego involvement will be higher. A deeper understanding of the issue will also have clearer views and attitudes, and a broader latitudes of rejection. As a result, people with higher ego involvement are more difficult to convince. However, when the message is right at the anchor point or is much farther away from the anchor point, can persuasion still happen? The answer is no. When the message falls near the anchor point, the assimilation effect occurs. At this time, the individual has believed the message, and repeating the message again will not cause persuasion. Conversely, if the message is too far away from the anchor point, a contrast effect will occur. The message t e n d to be directly denied, nor does it persuade. Therefore, when trying to convey a persuasive message, the most effective message is between latitudes of acceptance and noncommitment. The messages in this interval can change people's attitudes toward issues and achieve the goal of persuasion. So, how do we apply this theory? Social judgment theory helps us predict an individual's attitude towards an issue. First, we can identify the range of individuals' attitudes towards particular issues. This will increase their acceptance on the issue. At the same time, social judgment theory can predict who is suitable for persuasion and those who are difficult to persuade. This allows us to target our audience. For example, politics candidates' election message. If the individual is highly concerned about politics and already s u p p o r t a specific candidate, then we can decide that the target is difficult to persuade and re select our main target segment. Today we have many different types of media, including social media such as Facebook, Instagram, video platform YouTube, news and television, games, movies, and more. We receive all kinds of messages every day. Social judgment theory points out that people's different attitudes will affect their perception and judgment toward the same message. 
So this theory is very important in the process of persuasion, and we can have it as our guidelines for persuasion. When we understand people's attitudes towards things, we can persuade others more effectively. In addition to avoiding the failure caused by direct persuasion, observing the attitude scale of the target segment also allows us to persuade them more accurately. At the same time, this theory can also be applied to consumer behavior analysis to make advertising targeting more precise. Suppose we are an insurance company, and now we are going to convince a person. Convince him to value the impact of coronavirus and buy our insurance. We noticed that he wasn't worried about getting coronavirus, and didn't know much about it. His ego involvement in the issue is also relatively low. We know that he cares about his family. So we can create a set of messages to prove that older people have a higher mortality rate than young people. Therefore, he wasn't worried about getting the virus, but he was afraid of spreading it to his family, he became more alert to the virus. Furthermore, he did not know the actual cost of getting the virus, so we can provide detailed data to convince him, to make his acceptance range increase. By changing his attitude to the issue step by step, we can more easily convince him to accept the message. At this point, we can introduce him to our products and give him the message we wanted to convey in the first place. This theory can be applied to a wide range of areas, just like the customer behavior analysis just mentioned. Or in various fields, such as politics, global issues, same-sex marriage, etc. Next time when you try to convince others, don't rush to state your point. By observing each other's attitude toward the issue, I believe you can also benefit from this theory.